William Goldenberg, uh, first off, congratulations on your two Oscar nominations this year for Argo and Zero Dark Thirty. Thank you very much. It was a really uh, thrilling morning uh, on Thursday. If my research is correct, that's the first time someone has been nominated twice in the editing category since 1990. What was your reaction to finding out that you were nominated? Well, uh, we, my wife and I were up watching the nominations, and we were both thrilled. My kids were thrilled. And, uh, and one of the other gentlemen to be nominated twice is Michael Kahn. Uh, he was nominated for Empire of the Sun and Fatal Attraction, I think, I'm pretty sure. And he is my mentor. I mean, he's actually nominated this year for Lincoln, and he, I worked for him for four years. So to have done something or to be recognized like that the same way he was was really, really exciting for me. Uh, will you be preparing an acceptance speech? And if you are, are you preparing separate uh, acceptance speeches depending on which film you win for? I hadn't really thought of it, but I, yes, I am. Um, I will uh, prepare two. I don't think I can just take one and fill in the movie. You know, I have to, I think I should, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be nervous enough, let alone to have to do that if, 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 uh, you know, if I'm lucky enough to win. Well, you mentioned being nominated alongside your mentor, Michael Kahn. Uh, have, have you spoken to him since you were both nominated? Uh, what does he have to say about now being rivals at the Oscars? Um, he and I saw each other at the Critics' Choice Awards all, last week, and I was overjoyed to know that he was really proud of me and thrilled for me and, and um, I hadn't seen him in a while. I hadn't seen him probably close to a year, I guess, and um, and we're even though we don't see each other that often, we're still really connected and he was so happy for me and proud of me and it just made me feel really great. Uh, Argo and Zero Dark Thirty are both about high-stakes CIA operations, but otherwise they're very different films with different styles. Uh, did your approaches Did your approaches to them differ? Yeah, I mean, my approach to each film is, you know, unique to that film. Uh, you know, you, each film has its own set of challenges, its own story to tell, and style. So, you know, I try and adapt myself to the style of the film and not hammer the film into my style. So they, I did, I did have, um, you know, each, was, each film was unique. Uh, their respective directors, Ben Affleck and Catherine Bigelow, have both gotten a lot of praise for their work on those films. Uh, how closely were they involved in the editing process? Uh, both Ben and Catherine were, are very, very intimately involved, and, and they're fantastic editing directors. They really understand the editorial process. They shoot for editing. Um, I can't say enough. I mean, I know it sounds cheesy because, of course, I just work for them, uh, but it's the truth. They're, they're both incredible talents in the editing room. Obviously, they're, you can see their work up on the screen, but you know, I, we're, it's a partnership editing a movie, and, and I think that they're both great partners, and they both bring so much different, you know, slightly different personalities, but both fantastic to be with, and both are what I would call quietly brilliant. I mean, they don't, not show off, not show off, you not you know, uh, trying to look for a lot of glory. They just quietly say really smart. <laughs> they quietly say really smart things, uh, and and you know, when you most need some help or most need some insight, they're right there for you. It's fantastic. This is your second time working with Ben Affleck. You previously edited his directorial debut, Gone Baby Gone. Was it different working with him this time around? Now that he has a couple more movies under his belt. Um. Yes and no. I mean, he he had more confidence as a director. He had he also had a lot of confidence on Gone Baby Gone. I mean, Ben spent his whole life as an actor, he was an actor since he was a child, and he wasn't clearly wasn't just sitting there waiting for his uh, time to shoot. He was observing and watching and learning from directors and all the different people, all the different crafts people, and he, he knew his way around the editing room and knew his way around the set on Gone Baby Gone in a way that was way more sophisticated than the usual first time director. But um, you could see on Gone Baby, I'm sorry, on um, on Argo, his confidence as a director it just blossomed, and his ability to tell the story with the camera was again just to a whole other level than it was on Gone Baby Gone. And I think he would say the same thing. I mean, he really, um, you know, he's like I think like anybody. Like I feel the same way about myself. You get better in every movie. I don't think if you stop. Trying to get better, stop getting better. I think that's you're probably uh, reaching the end. Uh, one, one of the differences between this and Gone Baby Gone is that Ben Affleck also stars in Argo. Uh, was, was that a different experience for him working with you, trying to edit his own scenes? 
Well, you know, he had done the town, and he did that in the town. So I think he had, by the time we um, we got to Argo, he was pretty experienced in looking at his own material and, and judging himself. And it's, it's a really unbelievably interesting experience sitting there watching him watch himself and judge his own performance. He's completely objective about it. He, I think, and I asked him how, how he's able to look at himself so objectively, and it's just, he's his practice because what he'll do is every third or fourth or fifth take on the set, he'll stop, go back to the monitor, watch, watch those takes, see how he's doing because he, it's obviously while he's shooting himself. So he'd watch himself, and I think by the time he got to, um, by the time he got to, you know, the, the editing room, he's incredibly experienced in watching his own performance and really um, accurate about it and really ruthless about it. You're nominated by yourself for Argo, but you co-edited Zero Dark Thirty with Dylan Tishner. Uh, did you work uh, on the film together, or did you work separately? Um, we were on the film together. I came on to Zero Dark Thirty. We finished Argo in June, and Zero Dark Thirty finished just about the time I finished shooting, just about the time Argo was wrapped up and delivered. So I was able to come on to Zero Dark Thirty right at the end of shooting, and uh, so Dylan and I worked together from that point forward. Uh, we were working in separate rooms. We were in a small house in Studio City, and he was in the master bedroom, and I was in the living room. So we were at opposite ends of the house. So in that sense, we were working separately on separate sequences. Uh, what's What's the difference working with another editor on a film as opposed to editing it on your own? Is it is one easier or more difficult? Um, it's just different. Uh, the The good side. I mean, there are good only. I, I can't think of any downside to the multiple editor thing unless you thought, or the other editor thought that, you know, one of the, unless I thought that the other editor wasn't seeing the movie the same way, or I didn't trust them. I think it's a trust thing, and, and with and in the editor, multiple editor situations I've been in, I've been lucky enough to really trust the other editors. So, uh, you, 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 what the benefit is, you get this other pair of eyes, you know, um, you can go and, he can, Dylan can come into my room, or I can go into his room and see a sequence that he's put together uh, it'll be before Catherine sees it and show it to me, and I may have some input that he didn't see because sometimes it's a little easier to be objective when you're not so inside of the material. And same thing goes the other way. So I think it benefits the film a lot of times because you'll the film will be one step further down the line by the time the director sees it because you have a second, you know, skilled pair of eyes seeing the sequences. Were there any particular sequences in Argo or Zero Dark Thirty that were especially challenging or gratifying? Um, well, it's, I would say the movie is challenging. I mean, we were trying to combine these completely different tones, comedic elements and human drama, political, geopolitical situation, and then, um, you know, thriller aspects and make it all feel like one cohesive movie. Uh, the sequence that I sort of point to in terms of when we had that right I knew the movie could work, was the script read-through at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Um, you're combining comedic elements of this silly read-through with these people in these kind of silly costumes uh, alongside the hostages in the embassy being taken down for a mock execution uh, and juxtaposed with our house guests and what they're going through and some of the some newsreel footage and news broadcasts interwoven and, and combining all those elements in one, I think, maybe three or four minute sequence. When I was reading the script, and I think Ben and Chris Terry felt the same way. When we, we that sequence is sort of a, a benchmark. Can we make it? This works, the movie's going to work. And, and I'm very, very proud of that sequence. Uh, editing is interesting in that, it's, in that it's kind of an invisible art form, unlike other crafts like music and cinematography. It's not as consciously noticeable for the viewer. Uh, what do you think is the mark of an especially well-edited film? Um, for me, uh, like you said, first of all, it's invisible. I mean, I don't, I'm not the sort of, uh, I don't, my style of editing is not showy, I would say, and um, it's an appropriate, what I feel like is appropriate for, the, for whatever film the film is. The mark of a, the, I mean, I say, simply put, I mean, I work for this editor named Sean Barton who cut a movie called Jagged Edge, and he said to me, um, "What does the audience? What does the audience want to be seeing? What, when you're the audience, what, 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 what do you want to be seeing next?" And and that's the basically simple version of it. And and you're just trying to, when a story is well told, when you feel like 
you're really following the story, you're not lost, and it's moving in forward momentum, narrative drive, all those things make me, and, and, uh, and st knowing my characters, knowing what's the subtext of my characters, what are they thinking, all those things go into making a movie a well-edited film. Uh, one of the interesting statistics we Oscar pundits often cite is how rarely a film wins Best Picture at the Oscars without being nominated for Best Editing, which indicates how important a craft it is to the overall effect of a movie. Uh, would you agree that it's one of the most important aspects of any film? Um, sure. I, I, yeah, I think it's one of the most important aspects. I think that the wonderful thing about films is that it's such a team effort that you know, everything has to, to make a great film, and whether, you know, whether it's a nominated film or not, but, but to make a great film, I think you, every person on the film needs to be firing on all cylinders. You, know, you need to have that perfect, you know, perfect storm of everybody gets it right or close to right at the same time. And that's why it's hard to make a really great movie. So, uh, yeah, I would agree that editing is a huge part of it, but as is the writing and the cinematography and casting, which is often overlooked, about how, I mean, it's, it's such an important part of making a movie. Uh, so it's everybody at the same time. You've uh, edited a lot of intense dramas uh, uh, over the course of your career, and also some some comedies. And and you you've you've direct, uh, edited a variety of of kinds of films. Is there one genre or style of film that you're more comfortable in, or or that that uh, comes more naturally to you? Um, I, I think that I feel more comfortable in the, in the in the type of movies that I've been lucky enough to do this year. I feel like the drama, you know, that this kind of drama, drama, th drama thriller as uh, aspect of it uh, suits me. Uh, I've tried over the course of my career very consciously to do all different genres because I'd like, I think one thing informs another and being good at a comedy can help you. I mean, being having done a, a comedy or two help, certainly helps you with the comedy in Argo and you know the doing an action movie helps me with the thriller aspect so I've consciously tried to vary it up and jump around from genre to genre because just because I think you become a better ed better editor but I also think I mean just in a purely you know you want to keep working uh, you know way of looking at it you uh, you want to be a you, you don't want to ever have a producer say well I'd like to use him but he's really more of a drama guy so I don't want to. I don't want to. Maybe he can't do this, or he, he can't do comedy. I, I want to be good for every movie, so that you know that I, that everybody will want me to work for them. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I wish you the best of luck uh, uh, with uh, Argo and Zero Dark Thirty, which is now just opening wide in theaters, and and good luck at the Oscars. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be exciting an exciting year for us. We're, we're we're thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you too.